Hi. Welcome to Our Lady Queen of Martyrs Rooftop Garden. Our 5,000 square foot garden is located right here in New York City in northern Manhattan. My name is Kevin Sorois and I'll kind of be your tour guide to take you through the different sections of the garden and explain what happens throughout the season. What you're looking at right now is an aerial view of the rooftop garden looking west towards the Hudson River. All of the trees and vegetation uh, that you're looking at right now are grown in large and medium-sized containers and raised beds. We have about five raised beds all together and we also have a greenhouse and a composting area. Now we try to complement this sustainability by harvesting the sun and harvesting rainwater. The solar energy is collected in a solar battery which powers a water pump which draws upon the rainwater which we harvest and you can see the two uh, rain barrels right there in front of the greenhouse and we go ahead and uh, irrigate a lot of the garden with uh, rainwater. So that's kind of an overview of how the garden works and another shot of the aerial view. And uh, let's get into this uh, specific area of the garden. There's a clematis passing by. Uh, we're growing some cabbage in this container and it's starting to curl up and uh, hopefully it'll look pretty good. Um, there's a lot of uh, companion planting. There's some borage right there. And uh, we've got some herbs growing, some tarragon and some cilantro. There's some basil planted in these larger containers. And later on, um, we're going to be planting some tomatoes and eggplant. Over here, we have uh, some coral bells, some delphiniums. Um, and uh, this whole row over here is great. This is columbine here blowing in the wind. There's a little close up of it there. It's just a gorgeous uh, flower. Uh, more coral bells, and we've got some uh, snapdragons along with some hydrangeas uh, in the shade. They like a little bit of a, an acidic soil. Uh, in this row, we've uh, planted some beets and some carrots uh, back in early April, and they're doing uh, splendidly right now. They're coming up. Uh, we've got some uh, celery that's overwintered in the garden, and uh, we'll be companion planting that with tomatoes. And right now you're looking at, at a fig tree, believe it or not. And uh, we have about five or six little figs. There's an example of one uh, growing right there. This fig is designed for uh, hardy cold weather. We've got hollyhocks and we've got uh, dahlias planted. Excuse my shadow right there. And uh, we've got salvia. And all of these uh, flowers are meant to uh, attract the pollinators, of course, as well as butterflies and uh, birds. And uh, the rest of the garden uh, consists of these giant sunflowers, which we'll use as stakes later on to support the squash that we'll plant. So that's kind of what's going on in this area of the garden. And uh, let's go to the next area here on the side of the greenhouse. We've got more huge uh, hollyhocks, which we intersperse with our crops and uh, delphiniums. I'm growing peas right here. And uh, the peas are flowering and just starting to uh, come about. And uh, they're doing really well this year. Last year, not so good, but this year they're They've been great. And uh, we like to put a lot of wood chips on the bottom of this to mitigate some bugs and uh, weeds and also uh, retain moisture. It really helps with the irrigation and we don't have to water as much. Right now you're looking at uh, broccoli, uh, which was planted back in April. These are potatoes, believe it or not. These are uh, golden potatoes. Uh, we've been hilling them. Over to our raised bed, there's uh, some more cauliflower there. And uh, in the back, uh, in that back row right there, you see radishes, different types of radishes. Uh, another composting bin, uh, different types of flowers throughout, just uh, to attract the pollinators. Um, the trees surround the uh, perimeter of the garden. This one's a hawthorn tree, Washington hawthorn tree. This one is a Japanese uh, maple tree. 
got hollyhock spread throughout. Uh, you've got some uh, blue star growing right there, blue star flowers. And uh, just continuing along, uh, these are called uh, smelly wallflowers. Yes, that is actually the name. Some crepe myrtle bushes, which are flowering bushes that butterflies go nuts over. And uh, coreopsis, uh, a few uh, here and there. This is one of our rain barrels. We have two rain barrels that are connected. There's some coral bells, some showy stone crop, which is a succulent. A huge hollyhock that uh, we've been working on. Uh, beautiful uh, roses coming into bloom this time of year. Uh, more delphiniums, uh, along with uh, some lavender that uh, helps uh, with the uh, roses. A uh, Japanese spindle bush, which is very colorful. And we have our potato patch back here, continuing the potato theme with red Orlin potatoes. We've got gold potatoes, uh, some dill growing in the background there. And uh, just looking around back in our composting area and sort of an overview of the area. There's some bee balm in front. This is a tumbler type um, a composter. Uh, which works well. We use all of the compost throughout the season um, to fertilize all of the uh, containers. And it's a great way to work because everything is self-sustaining. It's organic. We don't have to rely on commercial fertilizers and that uh, works great. Hey, we're in the greenhouse now. You can see our grow sign and our vent uh, run by solar power, of course. And uh, these are all of the uh, tomatoes that have been planted by the students. And um, they go from downstairs in the classroom up to the greenhouse for a few weeks. And then we uh, fertilize them along the way. They're irrigated every day by sprayers above the plants. And uh, that's how the whole process works. It's uh, really fun. The cucumbers are already blooming here. Uh, we've got plenty of tomatoes, more than we need. We take the best ones and uh, the ones with the thickest stalk and look the strongest, we go ahead and plant. Here's some squash uh, that we're going to put near those sunflowers that I mentioned. And just look into outside and now another area of the garden. And so in this area, uh, as I say, we like to surround the outside perimeter uh, with trees and evergreens. And here you see an example of that, and underneath the shade is uh, flowers um, and a big, huge pine tree that's been there forever, but uh, it's doing really well. And we've got a nice raspberry patch right here. Uh, it's about 10 huge containers with uh, raspberry bushes that produce uh, throughout the summer, uh, primarily in the early summer and also in the early uh, fall. And uh, now you're looking at a, just a grove of uh, Coreopsis, uh, which is starting to bloom. There's snapdragons, uh, there's some uh, moon vine that are going to be growing up that trellis right there. Some more Coreopsis and flowers. And here is a calorie pear tree, an ornamental uh, pear tree. And now uh, in this other quadrant here, we have uh, some flowering jasmine and we're going to be planting our cucumbers and our eggplants uh, interspersed with the flowers uh, in this section. Over here we have apple trees, three apple trees, Baldwins. Another raised bed with uh, lettuce, uh, some milkweed to attract the monarch butterflies, which the students are propagating right now. They're, they're in hibernation and uh, another perimeter of trees uh, on this side, different flowering trees. And over in this section, we have these giant uh, sunflowers. We have chives. We're going to be planting tomatoes. Um, all of this um, is on top of a bed of compost. Another couple raised beds over here with a flower bed behind it. Uh, with different types of uh, pollinators that that will attract. Um, this is all going to be uh, gem lettuce, spinach, and uh, over here we have zinnias 
that are growing along with some sunflowers, lots of flowers, along with flocks and stock and uh, some peonies also in the background. This is our solar panel. This is uh, on top of one of the uh, surfaces. It collects the sun's energy all day uh, on most sunny days and it's connected uh, just working our way around and uh, through the different areas around our hollyhock tree and around our uh, elm tree over here into this little area where the battery is. It's a solar powered battery. It runs into a charge controller so the battery won't overcharge and that battery is hooked up to the water pump. So here are the two rain barrels. Uh, they're connected um, via one single hose uh, and we're just following the hose along the, uh, the garden and to the pump. There's the pump right there. It's a little 12 volt direct current pump. It does a great job. It's about 10 years old and the pump's an on-demand pump. It's hooked up to a hose and of course rainwater is going to come out of the hose and being an on-demand pump, when I engage the spray, the nozzle, uh, it builds up the pressure, releases the pump, and let's see if it uh, actually works. There's the water, the rainwater coming out, and we can go ahead and uh, go ahead and water all our plants with the rainwater. And briefly, um, that's kind of how that system works. It's a great way to utilize all of the rainwater we harvest, uh, especially with these hot, humid summer days um, throughout, the, throughout the season. And for a parting shot, I'm going to show you these uh, pole beans uh, that we've got growing, yes, on poles. And um, in about a week or so, the students will come up and uh, take those beans home, along with maybe some peas and some kale and some spinach and some beets and some carrots and some uh, cherry tomatoes. We even make our own tomato sauce and pickles. Thanks a lot for coming by to visit and uh, come on up and check us out sometime. Take care.